When Bradley Arrowwood first came to train my dog, visit. it sent me on a very unexpected journey. When you killed your victim, you were how old? 23. He was, by his own admission, a hardcore Los Angeles biker who killed a man he said had had an affair with his wife. You lured him to a house, you beat him, you duct taped him, and he suffocated because of that. That is a broken nose, yes. And I was honest with you. And I said, had I known the facts before you came here, I wouldn't have had you here. He wouldn't have called. As you said, before we go any further, I need to tell you. And you told us the whole story. And I thought, well, here's my opportunity to actually live the walk. I talked the second chance talk, but can I walk it? There are so many people that come back out or could come back out that educate themselves. And they don't get the same breaks I got. The breaks that he got led to a successful service dog training business, thanks to his own decision to change, and the change of heart of others, including Adam Growald. I thought, I have lots of choices in terms of who I could ask to help train my dog, and I could go with someone who doesn't have that particular history. The experience that I've had has changed my experience of ex-cons in general. I, Jerry Brown, and someone else changed too. Jerry Brown commuted Arrowwood's life sentence in 2017. His sentence was commuted. So basically you said, hey, listen, I'm gonna give him a second chance, but you still gotta go before the parole board. And essentially they're gonna be a, another mm -hmm. small jury yeah. and they'll decide whether you're let out. But he earned it. He was certainly, the, the record was very impressive. Jerry Brown, now retired and living on his Northern California ranch, knows about second chances. And let me just add up to you. But when he was elected as the nation's youngest governor in 1974, he was very tough on crime. He passed the first mandatory sentencing law in the, in the state that then led to uh, a lot more of those laws being passed. President of the Alliance for Safety and Justice, Lenore Anderson, advocates for criminal justice reform. Many people are really not aware of the history of the movement for tough on crime. It originated here in California. California was the state that uh, had some of the first laws enacted to increase mandatory enhancements for all kinds of different crimes. Then the legislature got in the act, and almost every year they upped the sentences and made them more and more draconian. So the result of that was from 12 prisons that existed when Reagan was governor, we went, after I left, to 33 prisons. So we went from about 25,000 people in prison to 170,000. That legacy Jerry Brown left when he left office as governor in 1983 directly affected Bradley Arrowwood when he was sentenced just 10 years later to life in prison with no possibility of parole. I had a death sentence, basically, death by incarceration. The crime was almost 30 years ago, and talking about it like we are now makes you feel how? Lost still. Lost why? I lived a lifestyle f feeding off fear, hatred. And what has changed? What really hit home was seven years into my sentence, finding out I had a daughter that was placed in the foster care system. She was told that I don't love her, don't want her, and hurt people for a living. She's seven. I never even knew about her. And that night, it just kind of, everything hit me. That one, no child should be told that. That means she's a victim of what I've done. He found opportunities inside prison. And seven years later, I had two AAA degrees. Two associate's degrees. How did you find your purpose in prison? I'm trying to do better for my daughter. I wanted her to not be ashamed at who I was. I had to be an example, even though there was no chance of me getting out. I wasn't able to tell her that I wasn't getting out ever because I didn't want to destroy any hope that she had. But why? You were never going to get out. Because I didn't want her to be able to say that her dad was a failure. Then in 2010, Jerry Brown was elected governor again. But by then, he wanted to undo the heavy sentencing laws he had championed as a young governor. Now, I was a politician. Uh, certainly, I, I moved for that move. I do think all the time that I was always looking for ways to temper 
uh, that very aggressive approach. But if you ask me, uh, would I prefer to do it differently? Yes, I would acknowledge that. Fast forward a few decades after all of that tough justice gets put into law, and what the state has is a prison crowding crisis. The one-size-fits-all, prison-first approach that California championed for 20 or 30 years bankrupted the state. When you were governor the second time, it wasn't just sort of your morality and your conscience that led you to think we need to give people a second chance. You also had the federal courts telling you your prisons are overpopulated and you've got to reduce that. Yes, that, that, that was a big nudge. Without the, the, without the federal court, it would have been very hard to do as much as we did. By then, California's bulging prisons included 4,000 inmates who had no possibility of parole, including Bradley Arrowwood. He was at California State Prison Lancaster, where he had become a model prisoner. I was the senior maintenance mechanic in there. Okay. So they come to you and they say, hey, want to learn to train dogs? It's something positive. And the program, specifically the program, was to train dogs to be service dogs. No, not originally. It was just to give dogs a second chance. Dogs that were in high kill shelters, like we were in prison, to give them a second chance at being adoptable. The prison's program was fittingly called Pause for Life. Those dogs gave us back our humanity. It brought emotion back into prison. But to come back out here, if it hadn't been for the, the dogs, I wouldn't have been able to function. Dog training was also a prize program of the warden, who recommended that Arrowwood's sentence be reviewed by the governor, the only man who had the power and now the conviction to commute an inmate sentence. In commuting your sentence, Brown didn't free you. Brown just said, no. I will give you the opportunity to prove yourself to my board. When he faced the parole board in 2018, the Los Angeles County District Attorney objected to his release, saying his offense was especially heinous and his history of abuse of drugs makes him an unreasonable risk. Still, though, members of the parole board unanimously agreed to release him saying he had a good background to succeed on the outside. By then, he had served 25 years in prison. When I say the name Jerry Brown, it's a miracle. Ever met him? No, I haven't. Want to? I would love to. So we invited him to travel with us. Good to meet you, Woody. Come on by. <laughs> to meet the man who had the biggest impact on giving him a second chance. So, Woody, how are you feeling? Uh, Kind of amazed. I had a million things written in my mind, but I don't even know how to say how much thanks and gratefulness for you taking a chance. Had you applied before? No. So you just... There was never any hope. Tell the governor what you've done with your life since you got out. When I first got out, I went to a transition home uh, to adjust after 25 years. From there, I attended Cal State LA as a full-time student and graduated with a bachelor's degree in organizational and applied communications. I got married to a girl I've known since eight years old. Started my dog training business. You got any ideas on what we ought to be doing with our prisons? Well, I think we need to kind of go back a step to where it used to be, that people get a chance to earn their way out, not necessarily just get let out, without any skills or being able to move on and go right back to what they knew before. Was granting commutations in some way cathartic for you? You know, I've had, uh, I was in the seminary for four years. I, I'm very sympathetic to redemption. I don't think, you know, this idea that you lock them up and throw the key away, I never, I never had that idea. I wouldn't say it was a cathartic process. It was a, it was a very uh, intensive process. <laughs> Yes. Before we left, there was another opportunity for some behavior corrections. What? Yes. Come. For the governor's own dog. Yes. We could train this dog in no time. Yes. I can do wonders in a couple of weeks. The dog also is therapeutic in the sense that when they're focusing and caring for something, just like us prisoners, it gave us time not to think about ourselves. You know, the dogs really saved us in there. While Arrowwood's dog training business continues to thrive, thanks to dog owners willing to take risks on him. He's so happy to see you. The risks that he has taken 
has led him to be the father he never was, to the daughter he hardly knew. She is now 29 years old, with a son. They are a whole family, living a second chance. Everybody wants hopes somewhere in the back of their mind that they can be good, that we're not all bad. That little bit of investment that somebody gives a person a, a lot of incentive to go a long way.